Hey guys, Yusuf here with Red Cloud Consulting. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I set up a simple theme collection in my Canvas app. It's a super helpful way to save you lots of time in the future when you ever need to make changes to fonts, colors, logos, sizing, anything like that. And so let's jump right in. Nothing's worse than when you finish an app and it's released and then your company or your customer changes brand colors. And now you have an app that you hard coded all the colors and fonts and you have to go manually update everything. It's super frustrating and super time consuming. Even if you're just almost on an app and you just decide to change the UI of it and you hard coded everything again, it's just time consuming and frustrating. And so what I'm going to show you is just a quick collection that I use. It's a simple theme guide to control the colors and fonts of my app. As you can see in this example, I have a green theme. I can change it to toggle to the next color and having all of your items built with your theme connected will make it so much easier in the future to make any adjustments you want. And so how I've set this up is pretty simple. This is a collection that I've just have built into the app. But of course, this is something you can put into a data source like Dataverse, SharePoint, whatever, and have it connected to all of your Canvas apps. But looking at it from this collection view, I have it set as a global variable. I always run it on my app on start since it's going to be the first thing I want to load because it's going to be connected to all of my properties. And I start with color. And what you can see is I have all these properties and within color, I have properties. So I have primary, secondary, my grays, dark, medium, light, text on primary, text on secondary, and background. Now, when you have a primary color, the reason why I have text on primary because you wanna know what should the font color be if there's any element on a property that has the background of your primary color, same with secondary. You know, so if I always, you know, if you just assume your primary color the text on it's going to be white, but then you end up changing your primary color to a really light color, it's not going to work. And you're going to have that same headache of having to go change it. Grays for me, I utilize a lot of grays, um, whether it's borders, background of an app, things like that. So I find it helpful to have your dark, medium and light. Background is what is the background color of your app. And now you can get more complex with it. You can definitely add way more color elements. But again, this is my simple setup. And just in general, with any kind of theme or style guide you put together, I try to keep it simple. Um, you don't want to overly, overly complicate things and have to make a guide on how to use all of your colors, um, especially with Canvas apps. And most of us are you know, cranking these out fast. We don't want to overcomplicate this for us. And the way I use the colors is I can go, let me just look at, for example, this. The reason why I have color with items in it, because I find it easy to just be able to put my variable. So I call the global style period. And I can see all of the different groupings of styles I have. So in this case, it's color period again, and I can go ahead and select my color. I find this an easy way to remember how to use it. You know, you don't want to have to want to, you know, let's say you have a style set up in your collection, but you worded everything different. And you're gonna have to go back to your collection and say, what did I call this again? Cause you can't look it up. This makes it super dummy proof. Yes, you're having to do period, another item, period, another item, but it's dummy proof. It's quick and easy to remember and get to. Past color, we have fonts. Font, same thing. I have font grouped with elements in there. I try to keep fonts simple. Um, most of the time, I really only use, I, I typically use the same uh, font type throughout my app, no more than two. And I try to keep the variation of fonts I have to four to five or really three to five. Because again, keeping it simple is going to be easier for you. So I have app header. In this case, I'm using it for any kind of main header of my screens header, subheader, and body. 
And it works the same way. If I go here onto this gallery, I can see I have font.header.size. And again, it's easy because when I want to update my font, or I'm adding, let's say, a label and I need to do the fonts, it's easy to remember what you called your global variable. So then I can just do period font, and this is going to be my header. And within header, I have size, type, and weight. Also, you can, having these connected to your variable, you can set up components. You can just have an app with a bunch of different elements like labels and inputs and buttons, all that kind of stuff. So you can just copy and paste it. That's what I usually do. I'll have a dummy app with all the different elements I use in my app. So I can just copy, paste, copy, paste. Going back to our collection. I then have margins. Margins I use for really kind of the padding on the outside of the app. So how far should this margin be on the sides and at the top and on the right? Typically, I my standard is using 16. If it's when you're building a responsive app, maybe you're going to do 24 for desktop. And then as the app gets smaller, you're going to want to switch to um, smaller margins, so there's a little more space for your elements. Um, my typical 48, 24, 16. Uh, 16 is probably also a common one I use, but I try not to go any smaller than that because otherwise it'll be way too close to the edges of the screen. Padding, so the padding between your label. So if I go to a label, in this case, I would be able to go to my padding left and I can go ahead and do my global style padding and do my medium. Having really for me, having everything connected to your variable for your style is super helpful. Um, I would say what I try to always do is have with or sorry, not with uh, the paddings linked to a variable, the color, the fonts, uh, all the font elements, type, size, weight. That way, any change or adjustment you want to make is a simple click. Going back in here, I think we went over everything. Um, the other one's column width. So when you're making a, let's say you're using a gallery and it's kind of an Excel-like table, Consistency is key within your app. So I find it helpful to have a column width so that you know you're gonna have a, you're gonna have some columns that are smaller, some that are larger. But sticking to a standard instead of eyeballing it will make your app way more organized and clear. Again, you can definitely add a lot more elements to your style guide, but this is gonna be a huge time saver for you. Um, other Kind of things I like to add in my color again, not getting complex, but I love to add things like the warning color, uh, success color, you know, a green, which green do I want to use? Um, things like statuses. So if you have statuses for tasks, you know, you can have a set amount of colors. So if you change your mind down the road, you can update it easily in your style guide. So again, simple yet effective. I hope this helped you guys and don't forget to follow Red Cloud on social, YouTube, LinkedIn, and stay tuned for more content and blogs about all things Power Platform. Talk to you guys later.